Paul Galui, Wikipedia article audio. Paul William Galui is an economist and professor of applied economics at the University of Minnesota. His research interests include economic development and growth, the economics of the public sector, and poverty and welfare. He formerly was the director of the Center for International Food and Agricultural Policy and served as CO chair of the education program of the Abdul Latif Jamil Poverty Action Lab. Biography Research Relationship between health and education Impact of the quality of the supply of education on learning Returns to schooling determinants of household vulnerability, and willingness to pay for education. Views on priorities for education policy in developing countries. Selected publications. Paul Galoui earned a BA in economics from the University of Chicago in 1979, as well as a PhD from Stanford University in 1985 the latter with a doctoral thesis analyzing labor markets and the distribution of income in Sri Lanka. Already prior to graduation, Galoui began working as a consultant for the World Bank, followed by appointments as economist in the World Bank's Population and Human Resources Department and as senior economist in its Policy Research Department. In parallel, Galoui worked in various academic positions at Pennsylvania State University, George Washington University and Oxford University. Since 1999, he has worked in the Department of Applied Economics of the University of Minnesota, first as assistant professor, then as associate professor, and finally as full professor. Moreover, since 2013, Paul Galoui has held the title of Distinguished McKnight University Professor. In terms of professional service, Galoui is member of the AEA, Econometric Society, and Royal Economic Society, and has served on the editorial boards of the World Bank Economic Review, Journal of the Asia-Pacific Economy, Journal of African Economies, Economics of Education Review, and the American Journal of Agricultural Economics. Additionally, he has served as CO Chair of the Education Program of JPAL from 2010 to 2014 and as Director of the Center for International Food and Agricultural Policy from 2007 to 2011. Paul Galoui's research generally focuses on the economics of education, poverty, and inequality in developing countries, and applied econometrics. Overall, Paul Galoui belongs to the top 2% of most cited economists as ranked by ideas repack One of Paul Galoui's main research areas concerns the relationship between health and education. For example, he finds early childhood malnutrition, and not borrowing constraints or the rationing of school places, to be the likely cause of delayed enrollment in primary school in Ghana, and documents how malnutrition among young children in the Philippines impairs their academic achievements by delaying the age at which they enroll into school and causing them to learn more slowly, though not by decreasing their effort exerted at school. Looking into the link between child health and maternal education, Galoui argues based on evidence from Morocco that mother's health knowledge, which is generally correlated with their schooling, is probably the main pathway how maternal education achieves its strongly positive impact on child health and nutrition in developing countries, which consequently suggests large public health payoffs to female health education in school. Since the early 2000s, Paul Galoui has used randomized controlled trials in order to investigate the impact of the quality of the supply of education, e.g. in terms of school supplies or the quality of teaching, on learning outcomes. For example, 
Galui finds that in Kenya neither the provision of textbooks nor of flip charts was effective in raising average student scores and that generally only the best students were able to take advantages of the improvement in school supplies. This in turn raises the question of whether the emphasis of many developing countries' education systems on top-down improvements to the supply of education may be guided rather by elite bias than by a concern for broad increases in students' learning outcomes. In another RCT, Galui finds that rewarding primary school teachers in Kenya based on students' test scores and penalizing them based on their students not attending the exam leads teachers to increase the number of test preparation sessions, which then increases students' test scores and exam participation, but is ineffective in reducing dropout rates. Earlier on, Having found school characteristics in Ghana to be highly correlated with student achievement, e.g. via average grade attainment, Galui had argued that improvements to school quality, such as repairs of classrooms, may be a cost-effective investment into education in Ghana relative to the provision of more teaching materials and better trained teachers. Other highly cited findings of Galui's research include Finally, taking stock of the literature on the supply of education in developing countries, Galoi criticizes that, although school enrollment rates have risen rapidly in the developing world between 1960 and 2000, dropout rates remain high and learning outcomes disappointing, and thus argues that the primary policy question should be which policies most effectively improve learning with RCTs as the preferred tool to conduct that investigation. More recently, Galui has emphasized that educational spending in developing countries could be much more cost-effective, as improvements to pedagogy as well as improvements to school governance and teacher accountability tend to be much more cost-effective than mere increases in standard school inputs, by contrast. Interventions aimed at increasing the demand for education by raising students' returns to school enrollment and effort are also generally effective in improving learning outcomes, but very widely in terms of cost-effectiveness. That many pre-1990s estimates of rates of returns to schooling are significantly biased because they fail to account for differences in ability and school quality and, even if accurate, may provide poor guidance to education policy compared to rates of return to investments in school quality, that the vulnerability of households in Peru to welfare decreases during macroeconomic shocks decreases in education and access to foreign transfer networks, increases if households are headed by women or have more children, and is hardly mitigated by Peru's social security program that the willingness to pay for schooling in households in rural Peru is high enough at all income levels to cover the operating costs of new schools in their villages, thus suggesting that increasing school fees to raise revenue for educational improvements in developing countries may be feasible.